well as specializing on particular plant species, many insect herbivores have further evolved to feed only on specific parts of a plant. These insect herbivores can be divided into discrete feeding guilds depending on the part of the plant that they feed on. In this lesson, we will discuss a variety of different insect herbivore feeding guilds and the adaptations insects have evolved to successfully feed on a particular plant part. We'll also present some examples of pest species from each feeding guild that cause substantial ecological and economic damage. We begin with defoliators, insects that feed on the foliage of plant using biting and chewing mouth parts. Common defoliators include Lepidopteran larvae and both larval and adult Coleoptera. Some Orthopterans, like the locusts, are also considered defoliators as they feed primarily on leaves, but may also destroy stems and flowers through their voracious feeding behavior. In North America, the forest tent caterpillar is considered a forest pest as it can completely defoliate entire stands of deciduous trees if population numbers are high. Defoliated trees weakened from the attacks are more susceptible to other stresses such as wood boring insects and infectious pathogens. Defoliation can also reduce the tree's growth rate. Severe defoliation over several years by the forest tent caterpillar can cause tree mortality. Defoliation may not be as bad as it sounds. Fortunately, most trees can tolerate defoliation because parts of leaves left behind continue to photosynthesize, and many trees are able to regrow their leaves quickly. Additionally, the excrement produced by insect defoliators can, in some cases, increase decomposition rates and nutrient cycling. It may also act as a fertilizer for understory plants and can allow trees to regain some of the nutrients lost from defoliation. Some insects, like larvae of agromyzid flies, are so small they can live and feed between the layers of a leaf. Insects and mites that feed within leaves are called leaf miners. The bodies of leaf mining insects are usually dorsoventrally flattened to support this lifestyle. Leaf miners typically have chewing mouth parts that project forward, and as the insect feeds within the leaf, it leaves a tunnel-like trail where only a thin layer of leaf epidermis remains. This is known as a leaf mine. The pattern of leaf mines within a leaf, as well as the frass or waste accumulated within the mines, can be characteristic of the species that made them and help entomologists identify the insect. Leaf miners tend to consume less plant biomass than other herbivores, as they are restricted to feeding only on tissues between the two epidermal layers of leaves. This limitation means that species that exclusively mine throughout larval development tend to be small. Some insects only mine leaves as young larvae before switching to defoliation or leaf rolling in later instars while others will mine different tissues like stems, roots, or flowers when they get older. The spruce budworm and diamondback moth are good examples of insects that mine leaf tissue as young larvae but feed as defoliators in late larval development. Many moth larvae spend at least part of their development as leaf miners. Leaf mining is most common in larval moths and larval flies though representatives of the Coleoptera and Hymenoptera also have leaf mining species. Insects that feed on the reproductive tissues of plants include fruit, seed, and pollen feeders. Fruit feeding insects are known as frugivores, and seed feeders are called granivores. Fruits and seeds have high nutrient content that provides for the growth of a seedling. Some insects take advantage of this resource by feeding on fruits, nuts, and seeds. These insects can be referred to as fruit or seed predators rather than just herbivores if the feeding activities tend to kill the seed, 
because most herbivory is not lethal to the host. In some species, adult females will deposit eggs onto developing fruits or seeds. The larvae upon hatching mine into the fruit or seed and develop within the tissue or simply feed on the structure from the outside. Fruit feeding is a common life history strategy of larval insects in the orders Diptera, Lepidoptera, and Coleoptera. Well-known fruit feeders include the Mediterranean fruit fly, which causes billions of dollars of damage every year by feeding on a variety of different fruits harvested by humans. The fly larvae feed in the fruit using hook-like mouth parts, and even if feeding damage is minimal, the presence of the insect ruins the fruit for fresh market. Many Lepidopteran larvae also feed within fruit, using powerful chewing mouth parts. The oriental fruit moth and the codling moth are significant Lepidopteran pests of tree fruit production in most temperate regions of the world. Hemipteran insects that feed on fruit generally feed from the outside. They use their piercing sucking mouth parts to puncture the fruit and withdraw cellular contents, sort of like a vegetarian Dracula. This type of feeding can cause the fruit to grow in a distorted fashion, as we often see when ligus bugs feed on strawberries. Seed feeders include Lepidopteran larvae, Hymenopteran larvae, as well as both juvenile and adult Coleoptera and Hemiptera. Both Coleoptera and Hemiptera contain multiple species that are serious seed feeding pests. Beetles use chewing mouth parts to feed on seeds and may consume several seeds in their lifetime. Hemipteran seed predators use piercing sucking mouth parts to suck out the inner contents of the seeds. An example of an important seed feeding Hemipteran insect is Leptoglossus occidentalis, or the western conifer seed bug. It is a native pest of forest seed nurseries in western North America and an invasive pest that has decimated pine nut production in Europe. As seed predation influences the ability of a plant to reproduce, plants protect their seeds with seed coats and toxic chemicals. Some plants also synchronize the timing of seed production. This occurs in some conifer species that shift between periods of sudden abundant seed production and long intervals in which no reproductive activity occurs at all. This strategy serves to swamp the seed predator by producing more seeds than can be consumed and ensures that some of the tree's offspring survive to the next generation. Insects that feed on nutritious fluids within a plant are known as sap feeders, and they usually have piercing sucking mouth parts to penetrate plant tissue and drink the cell contents or sugary fluids that flow through the plant. Most sap feeders are hemipteran insects that have piercing sucking mouth parts arranged in stylets. These long, thin stylets are actually modified mandibles and maxillae that can pierce into or around plant cells located in the parenchyma or vascular tissues like the phloem and xylem. The phloem is targeted by most aphids, while cicadas feed on the xylem. The parenchyma is fed on by some juvenile scale insects. Thrips, from the order Thysanoptera, also have stylet mouth parts that are typically used to rupture cells directly below the epidermis and suck up plant fluids. Many sap feeders inject salivary secretions into the plant to help them feed. Prominent muscles in the pharynx pump saliva into the plant tissue through one channel in the stylets, while the contents are sucked out through another channel. These secretions break down plant compounds, which can then be ingested by the insect. They also form a solidified sheath which surrounds the stylets in the plant tissue. The sheath may serve to reduce fluid loss around the stylets, 
protect the stylets from damage, or guide the stylets while the insect probes the plant tissue. Fluids ingested by most sap feeders are often nutrient deficient, so a large quantity of fluid must be ingested to obtain enough nutrients for insect growth and development. The gut of most sap feeding hemipterans has an adaptation that allows it to remove excess nutrient poor fluids. This is called a filter chamber. In the filter chamber, excess water is filtered through a permeable membrane connected to the hindgut for excretion, while food molecules are concentrated in the midgut. The feeding mechanisms of sap feeding insects can offer direct routes for pathogen entry into plant tissues, which is why so many sap feeders are also vectors of plant diseases. A good example of a plant disease transmitted by a sap feeding insect is the potato leaf roll virus, vectored by a generalist plant feeder, the green peach aphid. Our next feeding guild, the root feeding insects, feed on the underground structures of plants. Eggs are typically laid in the soil around the host plant, and the larvae emerge and tunnel through the soil towards the roots of the plant. They may feed externally on the roots or burrow into them to feed internally. Damage to the roots reduces plant growth because the plants lose some ability to absorb water and nutrients. Root feeding damage also exposes the plants to opportunistic pathogens, especially fungi. The most common groups of insects that feed on roots are Coleoptera and Diptera. While larval beetles have biting chewing mouth parts, fly larvae typically have hook-like mouth parts for scraping. Common root feeders include chafer beetles, which often feed on grass roots and can cause severe damage to grassy lawns. Another example of root feeders are the root maggots in the dipteran family Anthomyidae, which tunnel into the roots of a wide variety of plants including many crop species. Several Lepidopteran species are also root borers, though these may also burrow into stems and branches of the host plant. Insects that feed on the stems, inner bark, wood tissue, and vascular tissue of plants can cause significant damage to the plant's structural integrity. In some cases, the feeding activity of a single stem feeding insect can destroy an entire plant or even multiple plants. Most stem or wood feeding insects are in the orders Coleoptera, Diptera, Hymenoptera, and Lepidoptera. And so most wood feeders have biting chewing mouth parts. Cutworm moths are a good example of this type of destructive insect. The larvae of these moths are wasteful feeders that sever the plant stem at the base, leaving the rest of the plant to desiccate and die. This means that a single cutworm can kill many plants in its lifetime, and large populations of these pests can devastate crop production. While cutworms are external stem feeders, there are also insects that feed on plant stems from within. The wheat stem sawfly, a plant feeding hymenopteran insect, oviposits straight into the stem of wheat plants where the larvae emerge with access to the nutritious internal parts of the stem. The internal feeding of these stem borers weakens the structural integrity of the plants. There are also insects that are adapted to feed on woody stems, including many wood boring beetles. The emerald ash borer is a wood borer whose larvae feed internally within ash trees. It is an invasive pest in eastern North America where it has already killed millions of native ash trees. Termites also feed on dead or decaying wood, which can damage and reduce the stability of large trees and wooden structures. Remember, however, that termites also play an important role as detritivores within ecosystems by breaking down dead wood tissue in forests. 
Some insects feed on plants by inducing something known as gall formation. A gall is a plant growth formed through stimulation by a foreign organism, such as an insect egg or larva. Gall formation can also be induced by viruses, bacteria, fungi, nematodes, and mites. A gall can form on any part of the plant, including the leaves, stems, roots, and fruit. It usually involves significant alteration of plant morphology through an increase in cell size or cell number. As the gall grows, it acts as both a habitat and food for the insect living within it. Gall formation and maintenance is mostly controlled by the feeding activities of the galling insect. Mechanical damage and saliva injected into actively growing plant tissue, such as young leaves and buds, can initiate gall formation. Development and maintenance of the gall requires the continuous stimulation of plant cells by insect activity. So gall growth will stop once the insect stops feeding. Entomologists estimate that there are approximately 130,000 species of gall-forming insects around the world. Gall-forming insects are usually species-specific to the host plant and sometimes site-specific on that plant. They include insects like aphids and scale insects from the order Hemiptera, weevils in the order Coleoptera, as well as members of the Lepidoptera, Thysanoptera, Diptera, and Hymenoptera. Methods of gall feeding differ depending on the insect group. Beetles, juvenile moths, and wasps, for instance, feed with biting and chewing mouth parts, while the Hemipterans and thrips use piercing sucking mouth parts. In the diptera, larval gall midges, like those that cause the willow pine cone gall, feed by rupturing the tissue and sucking on plant juices using vestigial mouth parts. Some galling insects are considered pests in agricultural and forest ecosystems, while others that specialize on weeds may be considered beneficial biological control agents. The goldenrod gallfly is an example of an effective natural control agent of the invasive goldenrod plant in North America. Gall wasps of the family Cynipidae, on the other hand, are major tree pests. Females form galls by injecting venom when they deposit eggs into plant tissues. This venom induces modifications in the plant cells, forming galls that surround the egg and larva to provide protection and nutrition for the offspring. Galling insects such as fig wasps can also have a mutualistic relationship with their host plants. While fig wasps do cause damage through the formation of galls on the immature fruit of fig trees, they are also the only insect that can pollinate the trees. Different species of fig wasps specialize on particular species of fig trees. This complicated mutualistic relationship between the fig wasp and the fig tree continues because without the wasps, there would be no fruit. And without the fruit, the wasps would have no food source. When you consider the many different types of insects adapted to feed on plants and the direct effect they can have on plants, it is unsurprising that insects can be major pests, especially on plants that we value for food and fiber production. In the next video, we'll discuss the impact of herbivorous pests in agriculture, forestry, and horticulture.